Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 42. I'm currently in the middle of just clearing out my apartment. A lot of the furniture is going away. Uh, we're starting this episode with $9,856 in the bank. We're doing something a little bit different today. So I recorded every single hand that I played. It's a lot of hands. I think it's over 30. And my goal was just to give you guys more of an overview of how the game played. It's so different from 1-3. You go from people that don't raise pocket jacks to people cold four betting 7-6 suited. So I was hoping this would give you a more general idea of how the game plays because it's a really tough game compared to 1-3. Unfortunately, I ran extremely hot this session, so it's not going to be a great indication of how the game actually runs, but nonetheless, it will be super fun. There are a ton of amazing hands. Definitely messed a few of them up, definitely played some of them well, but let's get into it. Welcome to the hands. We're kicking things off here with ace-10 offsuit in middle position. We raise it up over a limp to 20, and we go six ways to the flop, so not ideal, but we get an okay flop of jack-9, a-2 diamonds. Uh, it's a pretty shitty draw on this board, even though we have an open-ender, so I just check it back, and the action checks the button, who bets $50. Small blind calls, big blind folds, under the gun calls, and now for 50 into 270, I think we have to call their open-ender and cutoff also calls behind. So we are five ways to the turn, which is pretty bad. It's three of diamonds. I'm pretty much done with the hand now, so I just check it over. But action checks through. Off to the river, which is the nine of clubs. Small blind checks. The original limper bets out for 100, and we are out of there. On to the next hand. Picking up a real hand here with pocket jacks. The button straddle is live, and small blind and big blind have completed. I do want to go for the squeeze here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just because I do want to ISO these two players. So I go an extra $10 here to 60. Gets round to somebody in the cutoff who now cold three bets to 260. Back on me now. And this is a very, very, very large three bet. Like this is more than 4x in position. And I just don't think he goes this big with aces or kings. Maybe queens. But I just feel like this is ace king. Ace Queen, some kind of bluff like that. And I don't mind just jamming it in here, picking up the free, you know, 300 ish dollars that's just been left behind. So just because of the sizing is just so big, I, I just don't think he's got Ace or King. So I do go ahead and jam it all in. And we fade the snap call. So uh, we still want him to fold just because I don't want to get it in with 50%. But unfortunately, he does find the call. So off to a flop, which comes down really nice. Jack-9-3, rainbow. How are we ever going to lose this? Turn is the 10 of clubs. <laughs> no dealer. No queen on the river. The river is the queen of hearts. My opponent picks up his cards. He's standing up and says, oops, I thought I had a straight and shows the ace-queen off for a very light call pre-flop. I was not expecting that, but off to a great start in this session. By the way, I hope you guys are enjoying the new high-def camera. And I did make the graphics a smidge bigger. I couldn't get them any larger, but I hope this helps. I know it's been a big request in the comments, but we are picking up pocket kings in the small blind. Another great hand. We got a hijack raise to 15 and a cutoff call in between. So I squeeze to 80. Big blind over calls. Original razor calls, and so does a cutoff. So we are going four ways to a flop. Not really what you want to see with kings until it comes down. King 7-6. Back-to-back -back top sets in pots. Amazing. Uh, start with a small bet, obviously. So 100. And only the original Razor calls. So off to a turn, which is really nice. It's a 7 of diamonds. It's going to be a lot better for him than it is for me. And most of the time, I do want to check uh, this turn. But I just don't think he's going to stab too often here. And versus this player, I don't need to worry about balance. So I'm going to go ahead and keep betting to try to get stacks in on the river. So 350. And my opponent pretty quickly calls. So... Looks like he could have a draw like 8-9. He could just be a non-believing pocket 10s or something like that. But hopefully he's got trips. So we're off to the river, which is the 9 of hearts. I really don't like this card. Um, it just means that 8-9 is now picked up showdown value and might check back instead of turning into a bluff. But I also can't think of any hands that are going to call a river shove here. I could go for a very small size and get a crying call from 10s, but I want it all. So I decided to check it over, just I'm blocking so much. Um, trip 7s are going to go for value here and give him a chance to bluff with a hand like 5-4 or maybe like miss diamonds. It kind of sucks the 9s there just because 8-9 is probably going to check back now. So I do check it over as I don't think we're getting value from anything. And unfortunately my opponent snap checks back. 
Um, after that, we are obviously good and picking up another big pot here. Button straddle is live. There's been three callers in between, and the middle position has raised to only forty dollars over these three callers. Uh, very small raise. Low Jack has called the forty, and I'm looking at Ace Ten off in the cutoff uh, versus this player. I've seen him open like Ace Seven off suit, like in early position. So. His range is not very strong, especially with that sizing. So I'm going to put in the squeeze play. Hope to take it down pre-flop. I got a decent hand for that. I make it 210. Folds back around to the original Razor, who doesn't fold, doesn't call, and instead re-raises to $700, more than half his stack. And now Lojack goes all in for 1.4k. Gets back to me. Obviously, we fold. And we actually just ran into Pocket Jacks and Ace King off suit here. So pretty unfortunate timing on my part. You guys notice that little chip stack there, the $27 chips in front of my cards? That's going to represent which hand number it is. And going forward throughout this episode, I'm going to keep adding to it so you know exactly which hand number it is that I played. It was very cardalized. So there are a lot of hands. Uh, yeah, Jack 4 suited in the big blind. Uh, button is raised to 15 over a limp. Very small sizing. We got a suited Jack. We're in there. And hijack also calls. Get to an okay flop of King 8 4. So we got the backdoor flush draw as well as bottom pair. And I check it over, planning to do a check raise, but Button is too smart and checks it back. Off to the turn, which is the Queen of Hearts. Check it over, and now Button stabs for 30. We're done with this hand. Just get out of here and on to the next one. Open up the pocket twos from the low jack, and we do get three callers. So we're heading to a flop, looking for a deuce. It does not come. It's ace, queen, queen. When it checks to me, four ways I'm going to check this back. I actually really like these low pocket pairs as triple barrel bluffs against like one or maybe two opponents, but... Four ways I'm just going to give up here. We go to a turn, which is a three of diamonds. Almost hit it. Uh, checks over to the hijack, who puts in a small bet of 20, and he is going to take this one down. Button straddles once again live, and we look down at ace three of clubs in the big blind. I think that this should probably just be a fold, but I'm feeling a little frisky. I raise it up to $40, and we go pretty multi-way. We're going five ways to a flop of jack, 10, 8, 2 spades. Now I'm wishing I saved my $35, but I check it over, middle position bets some amount, and I am not fighting over this one. Upgrading the ace three of clubs to the pocket aces, the button shot is once again live, and we're looking at a huge $50 open from the player to my right. Pretty sweet when you have pocket aces. I bump it up to 175 about 3.3x or so, I'm not great at math, and he does make the call. So off to a flop of queen, jack, six, rainbow. Not my favorite flop like queen jacks got gotten there and a ton of hands have quite a bit of equity but we can't stop betting now especially when spr is 1.5 so about 100 and he makes the call off to a turn which is okay it's eight of hearts so 10 nine just got there which is the most obvious draw not feeling great but when it's one spr you got to go with it my opponent now starts counting out his chips it looks like he wants to jam into us i will obviously be calling if he does this but then stacks him back up and then checks. So this kind of seems like he doesn't want to call a bet. And he's probably got a hand like Jack 10 of hearts or 9 7 of hearts. You know, something like that that just really wants to see the river for free. So I don't mind a small bet here. But I also don't want to give him a good price to draw. So I just shove it in. If he wants to make a negative EV call, he can. But he does find the fold. So another one. Uh, we're chipping up a little bit more here. Moving right along, we pick up Ace Jack off in the big blind. We've got an early position raise to 15 with a cutoff call in between. I think squeezing's okay, but since the raise came from early position, I'd rather just flat and sometimes make a raise. So I call and we go to a flop of 6 5 deuce with two hearts. Over here, I make a mistake. I check way too quick before even looking at the board. This is definitely a spot I want to be leading 100% for uh, one third pot. Six high boards are just so tough for the, um, the early position player as they're just not going to have board coverage here. So I foolishly check it over, and now he fires out a pot size bet of 50. Um, we just got to give him credit here. This is the worst board for early position. You know, six high connected boards just suck for them. So we've got tons of better hands. I'm just going to let my ace high go and move on. We're going to mix things up here. Middle position is raised to 15, and I look down at ace deuce of clubs in the low jack. I re-raise this to $50, and it folds back round to him, and he makes the call. So we're heads up to a flop. It's pretty nice. It's queen, 10, 7, 2 clubs. We do have the nut flush draw. So he checks it to me. I'm going to start with a bet. And it's probably going to have to size up here as the board's quite connected. So I go for a really big bet here, like almost 80%. And he makes the call. Off to the turn, which is beautiful. The five of clubs right away. 
He checks it over, and normally in the spot, I'd want to bet about 130, so I can still bet hands like ace-queen with the ace of clubs, kings with the king of clubs, those kinds of hands, but versus this player, I don't need to size down here. He's not going to put me in too many tough spots, so I bet 200, and he makes the call. Off to the river, hoping for a blank, and we get just that in the six of diamonds. Even better, my opponent starts counting out chips, and then leads for 275. Uh, we're obviously raising here. Question is how much? I really wanted to use an all-in sizing as that's what I generally use when I have the wheel aces, like ace, deuce to ace, five of clubs, just because they don't block uh, villain's calling range for his flushes. But I decided to go a little bit smaller. I just don't think he's calling a jam, even with like eight, nine of clubs here. So I size down a little, not size down, but I make it 900, almost 3x. And I think this is still a bit too big. I think I should have gone around 700-ish. Because his lead was quite small. He just wants to like get to showdown. It's less than half pot. So I make it 900. He just goes nice hand, taps the table, and mucks. But still, it's a big pot to pick up. On to this hand. Um, this is just silly. Uh, I'm in the big blind. The button shadow's live. And I decide to complete king seven of spades. Seems like it plays well multi-way, but I don't know. It's really tough to play when the button straddles on, and this is probably just should be a fold, but we do go five ways to a flop, which comes down King Jack 7. We got the two pair. I'm gonna start with the check and go for the check raise, but it does check all the way through. Off to the turn, which is pretty good. It's the ace of spades. And I think a lot of people are gonna connect with this. At least one person has an ace is gonna bet it, so I'm gonna go for the check raise again until it checks all the way through again. Off to the river, which is really bad. It's a jack, so we get counterfeit. We've got king with no kicker now. So just check it, try to get the showdown. Cut off bets 50, and yeah, we are out of there. Very poorly played hand from me. We are once again playing with our friend that we three bet the ace three of clubs and turn the flush with. So he's raised up to 15, and I've made it 50. Folds back around, and he makes the call. So off to a flop of 9662 spades. Could go for a bet here, but I decide just to check this one back in position. Off to a turn, which is the Jack of Hearts. And it goes check, check again. Off to the river, which is the King of Hearts. And now he leads for 30. Um, I'm just going to give him credit here. My most likely holding in this spot is Ace King, and I'm sure he knows that. So I'm just going to let this go. And yeah, seems a little bit tight, but I think it's okay. We are once again playing with a button straddle to 10. The small blind is completed, and the player to my right has raised to 40. I want to do about 25% three bet here, so I randomized and got 75% call, so I do make the call with the pocket nines. Button also calls, and so does the small blind, so we're four ways to a flop of ace, 10, four, two hearts. Pretty much done with the hand, so when it checks to me, I just check it over, and button checks behind. Off to the turn, which is another ace. Looks all right. Might get to showdown. Uh, until Button bets out for $100 into $165. It's a pretty sizable bet into four players. Folds back to me, and I, I really wanted to fold this, but I just thought you guys would all call me a nit on the video, so I make the call. <laughs> and we're off to a river, which is the three of hearts. Check it over. My opponent checks it back, though, so looking pretty good. I show, and unfortunately, my opponent does have the 10-7 of clubs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, turn is definitely a fold, I think. This hand's a little bit interesting. Button straddle is live at 10, and small blind, who's a very fun player, has straddled or blind raised to 20. Big blind, who's one of the better regs in the game, he does play 510, is a very tough player. Um, he just calls a 20, which is quite alarming. Um, this guy just doesn't have a limp range, so I don't know what's going on here. Something a little bit weird, but under the gun has now also called to 20, and I've got pocket jacks, so. Even though alarm bells are going off, it's still too good to just limp behind. So I'm going to put in the squeeze, and I'm going to size up a little bit to 120. And it folds round, and now it's on big blind, who folds. So, whew, looking for a call from under the gun, but unfortunately he also gets out the way. But still pick up $70 in a hand, that's amazing. Moving things along, we have a low jack raise to 20. Cutoff is called, and small blind is called, and I've got ace queen off in the big blind. You know what I'm going to do. I squeeze things up to 120. The low jack folds. The cutoff, who's the player from the last hand who blind raised to 20, the small blind makes the call, and small blind folds. This is a great situation, especially when the flop comes down jack, nine, four, all diamonds. Um, we are probably going to be able to win this pot with just pure aggression. It's a really nice flop for us. So I start with a small bet of 80, and he makes the call. Off to the turn, which is really bad. 
the jacket clubs i'm gonna have to shut down here this card really sucks i don't think he's gonna have it too often but it just makes it really tough to keep bluffing here so i check it over see what he wants to do and what he wants to do is put out a bet about half pot a little bit more of 250 uh, I've got two overs and a flush draw, and I think my hand is probably going to be good most of the time here. So I actually toss in the call out of position here. A little bit crazy, but this guy's also wild. We're off to a river, which doesn't improve me. It's a seven of spades, so 10-8 got there, as well as some of his bluffs may have picked up a pair, like 8-7, so not my favorite card. I check it over. He checks it back. I announce ace high, and what do you know? It's good. Yeah, ace high is good. In this hand, the proper straddle is on to 10, folds around to me in the hijack, and I start off with a raise of 30, folds around to a small blind who 3 bets to 150, so 5x, big blind now over calls, and under the gun gets out the way. Over here, I randomize between 4 betting, I only want to do it 25% of the time just because this raise is so big, um, but my randomizer tells me to fold, so I am out of there and they can duke it out. What do you know, it's pocket jacks again, I think I had this hand about 5 times this session. This hand and one other are two hands that I think I butchered, but I'm not completely sure. But Big Blind, who's a fun player, is raised to 35. The other fun player has called, and I've got pocket jacks, so I make it 150. Pulls back round, and they both make the call. Off to a flop, which is really nice. It's 10-4 deuce, two clubs. I don't have a club, which is nice. It makes them more likely to be bluffing. And now Big Blind leads for 200, and Under the Gun calls 200. Uh... A little bit dicey. I really wanted to raise big blind. I'm so keen to get in with him. But I just think the player to my right could be trapping here sometimes with a set. And we are really deep. Like, I just don't want to get it in here with, like, 8%. Or even, like, raise 600 and then fold to a jam. And just let him bluff me with clubs. It just seems insane. So I play a little bit defensively here. And I just make the call. And planning to get it in on any non-club turns. So, yeah, I don't know about it. Turn, however, is really bad. It's a queen of clubs. Big blind now checks it. Under the gun, bet, puts out a bet of 300. And I just think I'm so likely on beat here. Like, he's not betting ace-10 here three ways. So I make a pretty conservative fold here. Big blind, uh, he did make the call. They end up getting to showdown. And under the gun, plus two, had the ace of clubs and the three of diamonds. And he rivered a straight. <laughs> So my read was so far off, I can't believe he showed up with that hand. Um, I, I definitely think I misplayed that one. This hand was uncomfortable. Deep stack poker is such a different beast, but really enjoying it so far. I bump up the pocket tens to 15. Cut off who's a full-time reg, and he plays 510. He's there like seven days a week, just grinding away. Makes it 65. Button over calls, and a small blind, the player who was in the big blind last hand. This is the very next hand. Bumps things up to $635 all in. Big blind folds. And now it's back on me. Uh, we are definitely so far ahead of small blind here. But I look over at cutoff and it looks like he's only got maybe 1200 ish behind. So I ask him how much he has behind. And he's got two more stacks of green. So he's actually got a stack of 2700 back there. Oh. I think the play here is to call and then fold if cutoff jams. Because can you imagine cutoff just jamming ace-king as a bluff there? When I could be trapping with aces or kings? I think that would be insane. So think it over, think it over. I just really want to fold. I don't want to take this high variance route, but I just know I'm so far ahead of small blind here. And cutoff, it can be three betting quite wide. Button's obviously out of there. So I just go for it. I make the call. 635 off immediately tilts his head back goes ah oh, yes. <laughs> eventually he folds button folds and we go to a flop of jack nine five two spades turn is the four of clubs and my opponent immediately tells me he has pocket fours ah uh, river though is the 10 yes <laughs> we win with a miracle river that was insane that Oh man, that pot was that pot was intense. Would you look at that? Pocket jacks again. I raise it up to 15. Cutoff re-raises me to 50 and it folds back to me. I haven't seen a 3-bet too light, so I don't think I want a 4-bet here, even though we are quite deep. So I just toss in the call. 
Off to a flop, which is not great. King 10, 6, rainbow. So pretty much only beating ace queen now. So I check it over. Fires out a smallish half pot bet of 45. And I got to call one here. Off to the turn, which is the seven of clubs. I check it over. Probably going to fold here. Uh, but he checks it back. So off to the river, which is the deuce of hearts. I think I've got a pretty clear value bet here. But for whatever reason, I missed it. And I just check it over. He checks it back. So we're obviously good here. And I show. And sure enough, it is good. We're looking down at an under the gun raise to 30. Hijack has called, and I make a pretty speculative call with the sixes in the cutoff. We are like 600 big blinds deep with this player, and he always uses the 6x sizing. So, four ways to a flop, which comes down king 10 8 rainbow. Checks the brew. I'm not going to stab at this. Turn is another 8. Checks to me. Just going to keep checking behind, and we see the 5 of hearts on the river. Uh, now, big blind bets out for 55. Hijack calls, so I don't have to, and I am out of there. Look at this. Hand number 77, and I have pocket sevens. We are definitely going to be flopping a seven here. Under the gun is raised to 20. Player to his left is called. Hijack is called. I flat the cutoff with my sevens, and so does a button. So we are going five ways to a flop, which somehow doesn't contain a seven. Since there's no seven on board, hijack bets 50, and I am out of there. Moving things along, button straddle is live. Uh, big blind has completed, and I've got 8-7 of hearts in middle position, so I bump it up to $40. Button and the original limper both make the call. We're off to a flop, which is okay. 6-5-4, we have the back door flush draw and the open ender. But I'm just going to check this, and button stabs for 40. Big blind calls, and got to peel one. And we got a pretty good turn. It's the 8 of, sp eight of spades. Now big blind leads for 200 um, I really think that this is a fold here when he just leads out for pot. He could be free rolling us with diamonds. He's definitely at least got a seven and the best that we can hope for is a chop. And yeah, I just think this should be a fold. He could just have us dead with seven, nine already, but I can't fold a straight. I'm just not good enough. I'll make the call and button folds off to the river, which is the jack of clubs. He fires out for 500. Uh this really sucks. This really sucks. But only one hand we lose to. And I already called the turn, so I toss in the 500 and get shown a 7 8 of diamonds. He flopped the straight and we turned the chop. And he was free rolling us on the turn with a ton of outs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really thought turn had to be a fold, but. I just couldn't find it. Looking down at two limps, and I pick up King Jack offsuit in the hijack. I raise things up to 30 as I do want to ISO these players. But small blind does put in the three bet to 125. And with a hand like this, I just can't continue, especially against a better player. So I'm just going to let it go. Moving things along. Button straddle is on. Small blind has raised things up to 35. Big blind has called, and I've got queen 10 of hearts in middle position. I think it's a bit too weak for a call, and so sometimes I do want to have some three bets here with some hands like this, so this is one of those times. I raise things up to 140. Surprisingly, button over calls the 140, and small blind and big blind get out the way. This is probably going to be a pretty strong range, so I'm a little bit concerned, but the flop does come down quite nice for my hand. It's 10-8-7 with the backdoor hearts, and the backdoor straight draw, as well as top pair. Uh, my hand's not that strong, though, so I check it over, and he fires out a small bet of 115. Nothing to do here but call. So off to a turn, which is the nine of diamonds. Really nice. We pick up a gut shot now, and I check it over, and I imagine this is going to slow him down quite a bit. Sure enough, it does. He checks it back. So off to a river, which is not great. It's the ace of hearts. I check it over, and my opponent checks it back. So feeling pretty good about my hand. I show it. Fortunately, my opponent did have the pocket kings. And you know what? I actually really like his flat pre in position. We are 800 big blinds effective. Getting five bet would suck with kings. So, yeah. No, I like the way you play that hand. Nice hand. All right. Picking up king 10 offsuit in the big blind. We've got a raise and a call. So, I think it's pretty standard defend. And we go to a flop of queen 8 4 rainbow. Check it over. Original razor bets about half pot 25. In position, I would love to float this hand out of position. I'm just going to let it go and move on. In this hand, it folds around to me on the button jack four of hearts. I like to use a larger size in the cutoff and button when I'm opening, so I raise it up to $20 here, and both players call. We go to a really nice flop, seven, six, five, two hearts. We got the flush draw over card, as well as the open ender on the bottom end of the straight. 
When it checks to me, I start off with a bet of $20 and only the big blind calls. So off to a turn, which is the Jack of Spades. Really nice card. He checks it over once again. And I think I make a mistake here with my sizing. I go for a pot size bet of 100, which is quite polarized, but this hand isn't polarized. Like, it's just pretty much like a medium strength hand. I'm well ahead of most of his hands, though. But I don't know. I don't like my sizing here at all. The hands that are going to call are probably crushing me. And I'm just turning top pair into a bluff here. I think I like a smaller size, so I keep in his dominated flush draws. His hands like 6, 8, stuff like that. But yeah, I bet 100 and he does make the fold. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that one. All right, looking at a limp from under the gun. Lojack has tried to ISO to 25, but we picked up pocket aces on the button. Um, I really wanted to trap this hand pre-flop, but just seemed a little bit crazy. So I go ahead and raise it up to 80. Pulls back around to the low jack who doesn't think for too long and just lets it go. So, meh. Okay, we got king 10 of clubs in the cutoff. We're looking down at a limp, so I raise it up to $25. We do get a caller from the small blind as well as the under the gun limper. Off to a flop of jack jack 3 1 club. It's a pretty nice hand, a uh, pretty nice board for my hand. So I start with a small bet of 25 and they both call. Off to a really nice turn, the nine of clubs. Planning to fire pretty big here, but under the gun now leads out for 50. Um, I really want to raise here, but I think I'm just raising it to trips too often here. Like he called flop and then led turn. This is like one of those classic I'm going to trap you kind of lines that I see a lot in lies. So I just make the call and hope for a queen of clubs on the river. It doesn't come. It's another jack though. So now it's really unlikely he's got a jack. He fired a small blocker bet of 50 again. Uh, if I had a hand like pocket tens plus... I'd definitely be raising for value, and I wouldn't go too big here. But the sizing I chose is way too small. Like, way, way, way too small. I'd raise up to 125, and I just wasn't keeping track of the size of the pot. And obviously, my opponent just snap calls and shows the king nine. Oh, he had the king nine of hearts. He didn't muck his hand. He won. <laughs> he won that one. So, yeah, uh, pretty poorly played hand from my, from my part. We've got pocket nines again. Uh, cutoff has raised over a limp to 25 versus cutoff and button. This is a mandatory three bet. So I make it $80 the pocket nines and the cutoff makes the call. Off to a flop of 10, 5, 4 rainbow. Looks pretty good. Uh, she checks it to me and I make a mistake here and range bet this for 55. This is not a range bet spot. I don't even think I have the advantage here, but yeah, this should be a check back. But I go ahead and bet and she makes the call. Off to a turn, which is really nice. It's another 10, pretty much the best card in the deck besides a 9. So she checks it over, and I'm just going to check this one back. Off to the river, which is the 7 of clubs. Doesn't change a whole lot. And now she fires out a bet of 175. A little bit dicey here. Um, the spot is just so under bluffed. Like, she'd have to float with ace high and then turn into a bluff on the river. But my hand's just a bit too strong, so I toss in the call, and she mucks. So... Taking another one. We've got King Nine suit and low jack. I open it up to $15 and we go four ways to a flop of Jack Deuce Deuce Rainbow. Uh, three handed, I'd love to bet this. Four handed, I'm probably just going to check this one back. And it checks through. Off to a turn, which is okay. It's the Queen of Hearts. So we do pick up a gut shot. I still just want to get to showdown. Uh, so I check it back and cut off enough fires out of about 35. Uh, out of position, I'm just going to let this one go. So on to the next hand. Pocket nines again. Well, I'm just realizing how many times I had this hand. Uh, button straddles on. Small blind has completed, and I bump things up to forty dollars. I get two colors from the button in the original limper, so three ways to a flop of queen jack four rainbow. Uh, yeah, pretty much done to the hand unless the turn is a ten, and even then, I don't know. But checks through and turn is a six of hearts. Small blind now bets out forty five. It's really small, like one third. I can't even continue here, so I just make the fold, and so does the button. Buckle up, guys. This is a big hand. Under the gun is raised to 30. It's a standard 6x sizing. Lojack has called, and I'm going to defend a 6 of clubs in the big blind. We are very deep here. 700 big blinds effective. So off to a flop, which comes down 8, 6, 4, 2 clubs. Briefly think about leading, but I just check it over, and he bets out 40. Lojack also makes a call. And blocking a set of 6s, I'm probably the only person that can have 5, 7 suited. As well as like some 6-4 suited and 8-6 suited. I'm just going to have a lot more of those. So I like using this hand as a check raise bluff. Especially when I'm this deep. I do want to have some removal to sets. 
as well as using the nut flush as most of my bluffs just to cool their other people. So I raised it up to 180, original razor calls and low jack folds. Off to a turn, which is amazing. The king of clubs, we turn the nuts right away. And I want to size up a little bit here. I don't want to go too much more than half pot as I still want to be betting my 8-6 suited as well as like my bluffs like 8-7, 6-7, 6-5, um, you know, the hands of those nature. So I fired a bet of 300 and thanks for a while and makes the call. Off to the river, hoping for a clean one. Please, dealer. It is the four of diamonds pairing the board. Now we lose to pocket eights and pocket fours as well as pocket kings and sixes. So there are full houses available. But I still think we have to go over value here. I would definitely be turning my 8-6 suited into a bluff here and still firing away with 8-7, 7-6, 5 stuff like that. And then probably checking back trips. But with a nut flush, I think we have to go for value here. It's really tough, though, to get called by something. Like, I block aces with a club. There's no more kings with a club. Queens with a club don't even feel good now. Um, we're pretty much targeting lower flushes here. And that's about it. So I'm going to fire the bet. And versus this player, I actually might call off a re-raise on the river. Just because he is a little bit wild. And he could definitely find bluffs here. But I fired a bet of $700. And he goes into the tank. And usually in the spot, in my mind, I'd be like, please call, please call, please call. All I can think of is please don't raise, please don't raise, please don't raise. It is uncomfortable. <laughs> But after tanking for a few minutes, thinks it over, thinks it over, stacks up $700 in chips. He's going to add more to it. And then slides out the 700 I table my hand and it is good. I have no idea what he called me down with because he said he didn't have a flush. So got some very thin value there. I don't know what he was calling me down with, but that is a massive paw. I think it's the second biggest one I played on this vlog. Whew. On to the next hand, Button has raised to 15, and I choose to defend with a Jack-5 suited. And we go to a really nice flop of Queen-7-5, two spades. I just can't miss a flop this session. We got bottom pair and a flush draw, so when she bets about pot, um, nothing to do here but call. I think check raising is a little bit too much here with only the Jack-high flush draw, so I just call. Off to a turn, which is the 9 of clubs, and it goes check-check. Off to the river, which is a 6 of hearts, so we don't really improve, and the board's getting pretty dicey. I could turn my hand to a bluff here, which I don't mind, but I think I'm just going to check this one down, see if I can get to showdown. And she checks it back. I table my hand, and it's good. And she had the ace deuce of spades. Seriously, how good can I run this session? <laughs> All right, I am playing my final hand. I have actually built a $5,000 stack. It's the first time ever having a 1,000 big blinds in a cash game ever for me. So... We're going to end the night with a bang. I raise up to 15 with a queen, 10 of diamonds. We do get a caller from the button. And then the big blind, who's a pretty snug player, three bets us to 65. This is a really small three bet. We're in position. We got suited one gapper. So I make the call and button does as well. Off to a flop of 10, 8, 4 rainbow. Pretty good. He starts off with a half pot bet of 100. And I make the call and button folds. Off to the turn, which is the deuce of clubs. And now my opponent checks it over, and I'm feeling really good about my hand, as most players just aren't checking over pairs here. So I'm going to fire a small bet here and then check river just to get the showdown unimproved. The fire at 150, and he makes a call. Usually I would just check this behind, but I just get the feeling it's got ace high so often here. Get to river seven of diamonds and going to stick to the plan and check it back. Unfortunately, my opponent has the pocket aces for a very nice trap on the turn. And we are going to rack up with a huge win today that is it for the hands for episode 42 i really hope you guys enjoy that as much as i did uh some stats for the video so see i played exactly five hours we got in 144 hands played that's not including hands that i went to the washroom with which is an insane hands per hour it's like at least 35 hands an hour which might explain my why my win rate at 13 was so high the hands are they're fast uh, I played 32 out of the 144 hands for a VPIP of about 23.6%. I thought it was a lot higher than that. I felt like I was playing a lot of hands. We were in the game for $1,000. One buy-in and out for 4692 for a win of $3,692. That is the biggest win of the vlog so far. 
Downswing averted. That one feels really good. I am excited to go play some more 2-5 today. That's going to bring the bankroll from 9,856 all the way up to a new peak of $13,548. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video took a very long time to make, so if you don't mind, just drop a like below. Once again, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode.